Hey, Kevin, what are you doing? Well, I got a question the other day from a fairly new TIG welder, and he wanted to know more about triangular wave. And what do you use it for? Why do you need it? You know, should he buy this machine that has it or get that machine that doesn't? And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, what is triangular wave? Why do I need it? What is it good for? Well, it works with AC, so aluminum, uh, magnesium, you know, uh, you know, some of the other you know, more exotic metals that you do in AC. I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but mostly for aluminum. And because of the short, short duration of the, of the spike of the sine wave, if you will, it allows you to do very thin metals. It allows you to do outside corners and it helps to control the heat, it helps to control blow through, you know, and it just, it really, really helps when you're out of position doing something weird. So I thought, well, let me show you the difference between like the old fashioned sine wave that you used to have off the transformer machines and I'll just do a little bit over here with the sine wave. I'll wet this down, I'll you know, cool this metal down so it's starting from cold again. And then I'll do this other section just in the triangular wave without changing any of the other settings. 16 gauge aluminum outside joint. Let's see what we get. We're going to be using the Everlast Power TIG 255 EXT. And we're going to start out over here in sine wave. And then we'll switch it over to triangular wave which is right next to it. And I'm not gonna change any of the settings. I'm gonna just leave it at 80 amps. And I'm just gonna leave the AC frequency at 60 hertz. I'm gonna leave the balance set at 35%, I think it is. I'm not gonna change any of that. Just gonna change from one, one wave to another wave and just to show you what happens on the metal. So how do we do? So you see this is the side I did with the sine wave and you see there's just this little tiny bit of a shadow of, of uh, cleaning around the weld. You know, the weld went down okay, that looks nice. But as you come over here to the triangular wave side, you'll see the, a much bigger uh, area of cleaning without changing anything on the machine other than from sine wave to triangular a much tighter bead, a much tinier little bead in there. And then let's look on the back of it. So the sine wave, you can see a, you know, some discoloration on the back of it, on the inside of your joint here, where it was trying to burn through a little. But if you come over to the triangular, just barely any hint of that at all. So it's a much cooler weld. You, know, you could actually uh, go up a little bit in amperage on triangular wave. You get a little more penetration but it's a little colder. You know, it just helps to prevent burn through on the thin metals. That's what it's the best at, you know, best at doing. That's where I always reach over for the triangular wave button is when I'm on the outside edge of something, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, 20 gauge, you know, anything like that. Or you guys who like to weld soda cans together. it <laughs> be good for it too. So I hope that answers your question. Please reach down and hit that subscribe button for me. And don't forget the bell up in the corner. And I'll see you all next time. Hey, Kevin, what are you doing? Got something in my eye.